Welcome everybody to the Geelong Arena for this round two clash between the Geelong Supercats men and the Knox Raiders men. Big night tonight, the, uh, the ladies Cats getting up 94-89 against the Knox Raiders in, in overtime. An amazing game uh, by both teams and uh, well fought. Supercats got the win. Welcome to the mic, Brute Holgren. How are you, mate? Yeah, very well. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, sir. Good. Very well. So here we are again for the men. Hopefully we'll get something similar to the ladies' game and maybe a single or a double overtime. Yeah, well, uh, I just hope the men perform better than they did last week. They um, <laughs> they did not do well at all. So, <laughs> And uh, just watching Knox warm up has been fun. Mate, so, I, uh, I, I tell you, I, uh, I, I had this one circled because as a former... Raiders coach, uh, I obviously have an interest there, but there's a number of these names that I'm interested to watch play for this Knox Raiders crew. Jordan Adnam, brother of Kyle Adnam, uh, formerly played at Killsight, now across at Knox. Darrell McDonald, Damon Heyer, uh, he was actually playing up in Cairns in North Queensland. I had the pleasure of uh, working with him when I was in Mackay. Uh, and as well, Adam Thosby, uh, this guard lineup for this Knox Raiders is uh is packed full of talent super athletic can shoot we might um we might have a few highlights tonight i reckon awesome bring it on <laughs> depending on what the super cats boys can do but uh and uh dmac coaching too which will always make things interesting absolutely no look he's he's been a staple at the club for a number of years now and and having uh been guided and mentored personally as a coach by him uh, i can say that he will have his boys well and truly in tune ready to rock and roll so uh Look, I think uh, Leon O'Neill's probably uh, got a bit of work ahead of him tonight. This is a pretty potent Knox team. They did go down by three to kill sites, so they'll be looking for their first win tonight. Yeah, so uh, four tens. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what the next 40 minutes brings us. Here we go, just about ready for a one-man We're just about to tip off here. Great crowd for the Geelong Arena. A few empty seats, but all in all, not a bad turnout for round two of NBL one. And I think as this NBL one season goes on, we're, we're going to find more and more people realizing the high quality that's coming out week after week. Uh, and so once the, uh, once this end of this season comes along, we're going to be packing out stadiums, no doubt. Absolutely. And as we were saying with the, uh, the women's game, it, it'll be interesting to see where this league is in five, mm. 10 years when, when uh, it really gets a foothold in the community. Oh. So we'll have James Hunter and Lewis Thomas to the tip, knocks the control. I anticipate a, a pretty physical game here from, uh, from both teams. The first points on the board for the Knox team, Mike Rose. There's your guard play, as you mentioned. <laughs> Mike Rose being one of the older, actually, uh, guards on the roster who can still fill it up, that's for sure, as evidenced just then and on the Supercats rocks roster you've you've got uh, uh, effectively two NBL one rookies in uh, Cohen Blythe number 26 and oh great pass and Louis Varley who, who both have come up from Big V so it's a great feed and a great finish by Thomas again in the paint great vision on display from DeMarcus then with a nice no look yeah, Fox going into a very high set again Oh, oh! <laughs> now, <laughs> Bruce is sitting here speechless. We were watching him on warm-ups, and, and we just said he's got ups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was the, the 360 windmill that did it for me. I'll be honest. Yeah, with without even effort. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Kadarian Reigns come from the US. Extraordinary athlete. That's where you look at the, the US and the, you know, the college games are at the moment with the Final Four and mm. the depth of athletes over there is just scary. It's a, it's a genuine athletic difference. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just about strong or tall, it's just the, the pure athleticism. And, and also the, the, the main difference, they get an off season. So like they have college season and mm. NBA season. So in two weeks, or actually in, in about three days, the college season finishes, mm. they get into the gym. Yeah. And they start lifting work. We don't get that privilege here, especially as juniors. And if you look at the body shapes of the American guys compared to Australians, you know, some of them hit the gym and we don't because we yeah. don't have time. We're too yeah. busy training. 
Yeah, look, and I think this is where uh, some of his best practice stuff that's coming from the, the States, it's, it's really starting to impact this Australian game. You know, how many Australians have got in the NBA now? 13? Yeah. So, great touch from Marlow. Clicks on that. Picked it off the board. Let's see if we can get a good set on this one. Mm. Lots of standing around. Oh, return the favour. You, you don't get, uh, <laughs> you don't see Marlow blocked <laughs> very often, <laughs> if at all. So this commentary contest is already shaping up to be uh, <laughs> a Geelong versus Knox. <laughs> well, it's just fun to watch already. <laughs> it really is, it really is. All I can say is I'm glad I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis Thomas with a nice little touch around the rim. Scores all locked up at five. Two and a half minutes gone here. Now I've got to say a special shout out to my uh, to my girls that are listening to me tonight for the first time. Hey girls, hope you're enjoying the telecast. And I hope they don't mind me taking the liberty of putting a shout out out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy just blocked. Yeah, one end off the backboard and then drops a three at the other end. Kadarian Reigns. Yeah, I think Eddie's put on the line, so long two. Yeah, I would have passed yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a great assist though, a great time. Absolutely. Marlo Hicks being in the right spot. Was that Cohen to drop that? Uh, Was that assist? Yeah. Yep. I like that shout out. Nice touch. <laughs> Oh, I'll go one more. If my brother in Germany is listening. Hey, mate. It's <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of the modern world, eh? Absolutely. YouTube channels. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> I'll say hi to wifey. She's down here somewhere. <laughs> my boys are... Who knows what they're doing. So Adam Thosby at the line. Missing his first. Unlike him. So it's actually been a... Um, a good start, just up and down, both mm. even. Yep. Yeah, look, and again, we, we mentioned it in the in the call for the ladies that there's an element of feeling the other team out and, and understanding what their preferences are, what they're going to try and do. Are they going to run? Are they going to grind? Are they going to go half court? Fly did a great look. Beautifully set up by the big man, Hicks. That'll do him the world of confidence, too. Set. Yeah, it's interesting they're immediately going over the top of the screens and, and which the more experienced players then obviously just curl cut yeah. and, you know put their put their player on their back and just keep going to the basket because you can't get them so and I love that guard taking it right at the big fella to Marcus said I'm not having any piece of that I'm going to take it right at you big man yeah I think what they're saying now too is you've already got one foul so we're going to go at you and see if we can get your second one and yep sit you down Fallon to Marcus, ref saw something there. Good look at the inbounds here for the Raiders. Drive. Early shot on what was a, a long. Well, this will be interesting. Smack it to Marcus. Ooh, we wanted to. That's a great break. James Hunter letting loose from deep. I don't know if he's got that in his repertoire. I haven't seen enough of him, but certainly look confident in taking it. Wise decision there, taking the air out of the ball and running a set. Oh, feeling it. Demarcus Gadling says, all right. He's Let's see what we can do lot. here. He's been working a lot on his shot over the past 12 months. It looked confident. That would have been a scud missile 12 months ago. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I think uh, the Raiders here, really. Oh, get up, boy. That's where Lewis Thomas has got to throw that down. You get your guard throwing you an alley oop on the break. And D Mac has seen enough. I'm thinking this is going to be a uh, colourful timeout from D Mac. Understanding his repertoire. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So let's not put a microphone in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> there may be children watching. Unless whether we've got a seven second delay and a beat button. So that was a great sequence. The last couple of minutes from the Geelong Supercats just putting it on the the Raiders, who uh, 
you know, weren't really getting back and just some great transition offense there from the Supercats boys. And um, as I said, I think uh, DeMarcus had a lot to do with that. And there is a lot of basketball to go, but, but certainly if they continue playing together and, and looking for each other the way they have, that's uh, putting them in good stead for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's just the Supercats this week are much more settled. Uh, last week they came out and they were on the back foot from the get-go. And Knox, um, I think, is looking to settle. Yeah. And that shot on the last you know, you know, inline play was fine, but everyone stood around and watched it. Yeah. Just thinking, oh, geez, that looks good, but that doesn't help anyone. So, and then for that to happen, and then to get a fast break from it, that's just unforgivable because, you know, if, if the guards are on the weak side, they've just got to take off, and the guy, the, the centers and forwards at the top, they should have been running the other way. So, I'm, I'm tipping that was the uh, message he gave to them in nice terms. Yes, absolutely. Would have been a measured delivery. It would have been run back on defense, gentlemen. Please. Yes. Please end do of, that. End of time out. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, number 20, Mike Rose, but uh, there is, of course, number five, Darrell McDonald, um, D Mac's son, out there as well, an explosive guard. Long two again. Kadarian Range is doing work. Great pass. Great pass. Supercats Simon forgot about him. Simon Grant, the easy bucket. Well, they just didn't want to get in the photo. That's <laughs> right. Raiders look like they put on Damon Heyer after that timeout. Oops. And, and have a guess who? Marcus Gatlin again. Making it happen. Oof, it's a nasty cross. He's going to get someone. Guarantee it. It's a bit like a block though. If you don't get the ball back, it doesn't count. Oh, get that oh, out of here. Oh, Lewis Thomas says, no, thank you, Damon Hire. Welcome to the game. DeMarcus is just fearless. Oh. Now, for those playing at Two home, too late. Damon Hire is, is a high flyer. He might have caught some of his high wire act in, uh, in the NBL recently, but uh, would have gone through his mind to try and smack that on someone's head, but went for a pass. Did not come off. Tapped his chest, though. My bad. Ooh, swish. Oh, friendly roll. <laughs> There's that roller door. Someone open the door. Let the wind in, blow it in. Knox is really terminal. One pass, two passes mass. Before they just I'll be honest, the, it, at the start they were very structured, very set, yep. getting through their motion. Uh, recently it's really just been one screen, and here we go, another fast break opportunity. Ooh. Referee. So it's interesting, they had a breakdown and then they caught a horn set, which means there's no one moving and the only one person's got the ball. Mm. And typically a horn set is, kills it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what DMAC adjusts now. So substitution for the Raiders, we've got Casey Marshall coming in for the first time and Jordan Adnam, ex Kilsyth player, come across to Knox. That would have been fun for him last week, playing it. Yeah, I could imagine. Yes, especially considering... Uh, no rivalry there, eight minutes no. apart. So here come the Supercats starting to rotate players. So Lewis Varley makes two. Having a rest now. Let's see if we can get some more structure out of the Raiders now. Some fresh legs. Just getting themselves sorted. Looking down the list of this Raiders squad, they are very, it seems to be guard heavy. So I'd suggest that uh, Kadarian Reigns is, is no doubt going to play a lot of minutes tonight, but I'm just interesting to see how, uh, how they then sub, sub through that five position to see whether or not, you know, someone big or as big yep. can come in and fill the hole, fill the gap. Yeah, a lot of it as a lot of games always come down to second chance points. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people talk free throws, and a lot of free throws come from second chance points. Yep, yes. Cuts the opposition off guard, taking that ball. Well, it's just effort. Yep. You know, you, you just got to attend. And even if you have the simple team rule of, you know, three guys have to go and put at least one foot in the paint for the O glass, and then two guys have to be safety. 
You'd be surprised how many times it works. See a lot more dribbling. Great strong basketball. Oh nice boy. finish there. James Hunter. He's a rookie. Oh, oh you've got to finish that. That's a highlight for the wrong reason. Yeah. <laughs> so Josh Tang there just getting a bit of a lesson on don't run to the trapping area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Should we draw the lines? <laughs> but the, the value that uh, the, these young guys get out of these kinds of contests is... Oh, he's phenomenal. Uh, all ball, Bruce. Come on. Yeah. And he's a... Uh, but Liam, look rookie at that. Too. Yeah, good stick back by Liam. So, so Tang is a true rookie. He got elevated Sorry. up in the youth league team just three or four weeks ago. Great opportunity then for him to come in. Just a young kid by the looks of it. 21-year-old. Substitution for the women's <coughs> Mark Goodwin's just joined the uh, program and coming into his first minute. He's wearing my son's top, so that's interesting. <laughs> Josh, Josh streaking, doing what good guards should do. Get ahead and Geelong scores again. High scoring first quarter for these Super Cats. Yeah, Up by 16. D Mac would not be happy with a third no, quarter. No, I can. And another turnover for the Raiders. This is not what they're looking for. Oh. This is where they can be really dangerous. Damon Hyde deciding to pull the ball up. Probably a wise choice, although the entry pass. Another turnover. Can the Supercats capitalize? Oh, good take. Great move by Blythe Liam. McInerney couldn't clean up the board. Been a fast quarter too. Not many fouls called. Been no, good. absolutely. And 44 points scored. You gotta love that. Especially when 30 of them are on your team. <laughs> 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 Sorry for those watching at home. <laughs> Bit of friendly banter. So again, we're seeing a lot of single penetration action, and D Mac gets his first warning. He's done well. Took nine minutes and four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I see, think see Pop got ejected in 63 seconds. Yeah, he did. Night. Absolutely. Yeah. Damon Hyde just looking to get to work. Looking at the N1. The warning was worth it. Told him about it too. Supercats up by 14. And dare I say it, a pretty easy 14 up. They've just been running, hustling, putting in the effort they need to. The Raiders have look a bit, been looking a bit disjointed. Uh, offensively, defensively, they're not getting back from what we can tell, but Geelong playing a very, very upbeat game, very high-paced game. Hopefully they can sustain it for, for four quarters. Josh Tang calling Go his own number. One. Yeah, really? He's got that right? Uh, not today, not on that one. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think so. I'd like, I'd, I'd like to see that. You know, guys shooting it without fear. Yeah, absolutely. And they're obviously in the instruction to go two for one, so if it was open, you've got to launch it. Yep. Don't die wondering. You can coach how to fix it. You can't coach if you can't shoot it. Yes, absolutely. So Marcus back in the game. This is interesting. 33 seconds to go. Mm. Given they're up 13, what's the oh, just what's the viewpoint from Leon there putting Demarcus back in? Maybe guarantee get another bucket or at least mm. do an ISO play and get him up. That would be the logic on it. You wouldn't want him playing defense and maybe get his first foul. So James Hunter, unsuccessful in the first, looking down the second. <laughs> Missed both. That's a Knox will get the ball back. Right, so for an on ball. They're in a zone. Ah, interesting call there from the Raiders squad. Looking to go zone. 
Eight seconds left on the shot clock. It's going to <laughs> Not a bad look. Gotta stop what, can, what can Knox get out of this? Damon Heyer trying to take it the length of the floor. Three seconds Three, to go two. to Marcus. Ooh. Well, an entertaining, <laughs> well, an entertaining first quarter sees the Supercats up 30 to 17. Build off hustle and well, making more shots than the other team, Bruce. I think they were just more disciplined on defense. Um, Knox broke down a lot in their sets. In the first few sets, they were, as you said, active. Um, everyone's getting a look, people were moving, and all of a sudden it was uh, my turn to dribble it and explore. And uh, Supercats have just collapsed in, so, and then on, at the other end, Supercats have, the last couple of minutes, they weren't real active, but, but they're moving the ball around, which is what they didn't do last week, so they've learned that lesson, which is good. And that's definitely something that no doubt coach would be talking about uh, during the week before the game and in the practices and even just in some of the team get-togethers around, okay, what, what happened last week and what can we improve on? Uh, coming up against this team immediately. What's a, what's a quick fix? There might be some long-term things that you need to address that might take a few weeks, but certainly week to week, but that is something you can fix pretty quick to say, okay, yeah. well. Constant improvement, point of mm. emphasis. And, uh, you know, D-Mac and his assistant coaches then had a really long chat, and he's only just getting into it now with 50 seconds to go. But the message for him has to be, you've got to be better on defense. Yeah. Yep. And then offensively, you literally need to work together and take care of each other. Because it's uh, it doesn't matter if someone gets 40. So, know. yeah, th there are a lot of new members to this this Knox crew, this Knox team. Uh, experienced players, but, but new to each other. So it doesn't matter how many training sessions you do, how many scrimmages you might have, it's not the same as gameplay. Yeah. Uh, you you know, just got to do it. It different. doesn't matter what level you're at. You've just got to do it together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, so the, and, and the biggest... Uh, the biggest glaring point for me was, you know, so what if someone goes one-on-one -on -one and runs a horn set? It doesn't matter. It's when the shot goes up, then what happens? What's next? What's and the if there's no effort on the hourglass, then, and then, then there's no conscious effort to stop the, the fast break, but the hourglass kills that. Like, if you're rebounding or scoring, there's no fast break. No. So the arena's up and about after the first corner. Absolutely. Supercat doing what he does. Oh, that was impressive, too. <laughs> For those of you who could see that at home. <laughs> Brad's uh, looking to get one of those uh, headbands and practice that at home. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to go and ask the organisation where he got that from. So as we kick off the second quarter, Supercats holding the lead. 13 points to Marcus Gatlin, the leading rebounder for the Geelong Supercats, if you can believe that at the moment. Great pass, great vision. Well done. All eyes for the ball from the Raiders on defense then. They had three eyes at looking at it and thought about the open man camped under the basket. And if you notice that set, the ball went from one side to the other. And as long as you make the defense move, it's, you're in good shape. At least they're, now they're competing on the O-boards. They're actually, yeah, uh, the effort certainly has picked up. Yeah. I still think there needs to be some more inside paint work from the Raiders boys. I, I, you know, no doubt they've got good shooters and great guards and, and sure, they may not be as big as, as the Supercats. But having said that, you've still got to at least put some pressure and try and collapse the D a little to then really give yourselves a, an opportunity to get your good shooters shooting in rhythm uncontested. And you've then got rebounders. Josh Tang, overshot that one. Jordan Adnam. Foul called here on the floor. Number, number 15, Marlo Hicks, picking up the foul there. That's his second. That is his second. So what you were saying before about the, the sets, Knox is typically trying to throw it into the post on the set first or second pass mm. and kill it. But geez, they're long and athletic, so yeah. if they get that timing down, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, very much so. Jordan Adam hitting his first. See Kadarian Reigns looking to check in back into the game. Knox showing a full court trap here. Trying to guard the guide the guards to an area so they can 
pick it off. The Supercats doing a great job through passing for all those young kids at home. Never try and dribble through a press. And see, the, the good thing about that, but oh, the bad great. thing about that, was they beat the press and they shot within eight seconds, which is exactly what Knox wanted them to do. Yeah, they want to rush. So you get over centre line, you beat the press, and then you go, right, let's get a really good shot. Marlo Hicks, Hi. he's doing big Bully. boy things. <laughs> Said, I'll have that. Get out of my way, little man. So Darrell McDonald huddling the ball. Again, the timing just a little bit out for the Raiders. Yep. But scary prospects once they get it right. Foul here on the play. So Mark Goodwin, that's correct. Sterian Reigns back in for the Raiders, adding a lot more size to the court. Louis Varley back on deck for the Cats. Great drive. Just couldn't, uh, couldn't, finish. couldn't make it. And here the Cats go running again. Louis Varley thought about it. Marlo Hicks. Oh, oh great. great pass. Excellent vision. The Cats are doing a wonderful job of just finding spots. That's, that's the, second, uh, the second or third time DeMarcus has nearly had the ball stripped. I think he just needs to be a bit more cautious with the ball. Certainly the Raiders are, are looking to, to pick it off where they can. That was a great decision on the break too. It was, it was yeah, we can launch the three, but no one's in place. And mm. can we get a better look? Six seconds on the shot clock. Lewis Thomas could make a count. Million dollar move, 10 cent finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet touch there with the big man, James Hunter. In what has been a very slow scoring second quarter so far. Supercats 34. The Raiders 21. And what was a flurry of just offensive prowess in the first quarter? It's been very slow. It's been very pedestrian, hasn't it? It really has, yeah. It's, it's your, your turn to miss. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's your fault, Bruce, because you said it was amazing in the first quarter. Sure. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so right now, Leon has called the timeout, and I'm assuming he's going to want to try and change the tempo a little bit. Yeah. And the Supercats guys are getting nailed on especially on the, the high pick and rolls, they're getting stuck on yep. those and they're curling. And Durrell obviously wants to drive everything. He's uh, had some wide open looks and not even co contemplated that, so they'll adjust on that. Um, and then I'm thinking DMAC, he just wants to get some continuity on offense, like let's get the ball through some hands and, and a, a, a broken record already, you know, 13 minutes into the game, but they've just got to get the ball through hands and get it moving so they can open up the paint and just create wide open shots. Yeah, they're certainly not putting themselves in a in a position to exploit, dare I say, the the athleticism yeah. they have available there, mm. and they've stopped the bleeding on defense. Yes. Now they yep. just need to start executing on offense. And I mean, Knox at the moment shooting 26% is not going to get it done. Uh, you know, Geelong shooting 50% at the moment. Uh, just got to get good looks. I think there's there's been plenty of shots that have gone up the Raiders, it's just a matter of getting those quality looks that um, are actually are going to result in points for them. So yeah. it looks like a zone coming out of that timeout. Trapping zone. It's uh, interesting how many teams are doing a 1-3-1 this year. Mm -hmm. It's like the, oh look, we forgot about this, been away for 20 years and now we've run it on the right. <laughs> and there's always been this big kick against the zone, but I think it's harder to play than a man-to-man -man because the, the roles and responsibilities are so much different. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really an interesting discussion point within the basketball fraternity and certainly in terms of development and, and junior ranks as mm. well. In Do you teach zone or not? You know, the, the traditional line is it's a lazy defense, man-to-man -man is what you need to be doing. But 
it's uh, been a bit of a shift in mindset now around that in it zones can be a highly highly aggressive defensive style as Absolutely. Marcus Gatlin getting them on the board the Super Cats up 15 but the uh, a good zone irrespective of the formation and the setup can be highly disruptive and speaking of disruptive yeah, I'm, I'm all for the, the you know, man-to-man -man and, and teaching that, but, it, you know, VJBL on a Friday night, it's like, well, you're allowed to play five minutes in, in two quarters. So five minutes this quarter and that quarter, whenever you choose, mm. you can play a zone because right now you get done to 16s. Oh, great play. That was a great play run by the Super Cats for an easy bucket in the end. The end one opportunity here, Lewis Barley just said, thank you very much, I'll have it. After that substitution, so you get under 16s, and all of a sudden you get coaches that go, "I'm going to teach my kids a zone to throw at it," and all of a sudden, you know, the other teams don't know what to do. Yes, absolutely, no, absolutely, and I think there's a lot of value in in having it in the arsenal, uh, a good zone. Um, you know, it's a, it's actually quite a, a difficult defensive structure to to train and execute correctly. Yep, it's so reliant on everyone committing to and understanding where they need to be. So. Yeah. Ron McDonald doing a great, great job of getting through the defense and so the Raiders a, make them pay. That was a, a two pass offense in 10 seconds. So great shot. Adam Thosby showing the range. And the call of the night so far is Bruce DeMarcus Carlton. DeMarcus being just fearless. Yep. I've never seen a guy of his stature take it against two or three much bigger humans. Yeah, he's only about 6'3". Yep. He's got serious ups, but yeah. he's strong, as it's you can strong, see. strong, yeah. Oh, the deep tray. Look out. They're awake. Mike Rose <laughs> decides, okay, I'm getting in on this action. Showing the range. Maybe he was too close previously. And all of a sudden, it's an 11-point game. Halfway through the second half. Colin Blythe says thanks. Blythe looking at it. It's a nice touch. And settle into it. Darian Reigns with another rebound. Should put him around six, I think. Mike Rose teeing up another one. Got him. Yep, and this is where you can't, you can close out hard, but you cannot get in the space of the shooter, once, especially once they're in the air. You've got to protect the shooter. That's a good timeout. Leon O'Neill calling a timeout for the Super Cats. Absolutely, great time out there. Only scored eight points this quarter, and they're missing the, the easy stick back shots they'll make in the first quarter now. Yeah, aren't absolutely, going absolutely. And a lot of that is due to, to not shifting shifting gears a little, I think, especially on, on defense. They're, they've adjusted, and they are just trying to disrupt what the Supercats were doing. For uh, those of you playing along at home, this is uh, Brad's favorite song, and he's up <laughs> doing the dance. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, for those that know me, this they actually know that that's true, yes. <laughs> And it's good to see the local Geelong crowd right into it as well. Most of them uh, young, which is fantastic. I'm surprised they even know this stance. A video controller, Marcus, he's getting right into it as well. <laughs> no, no, I think this is where the real value in not just NBL1, but local basketball, not only from a development pathway for the athletes, but for the communities around it, for everyone involved in it, as, a, as an event for a Saturday night, you know, potentially to have uh, a packed house. What have we got here, Bruce? About 2,000 people on a packed house. On a packed house, 2,000. Yep. Probably 1,500 here tonight. At the moment, absolutely. And, you know, it's a, it's a great environment. People are involved and engaged, watching a great game of basketball. So, yeah, it's, it, it, and you're right. It's one of those things where you, you go to the community stadium and it's a night out. <coughs> So Mike Rose at the line for two. Three. Oh, he wasn't on the line? Uh, still got two more. So far, I've missed calls. And <laughs> I think six and ones. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said earlier, Mike Rose shooting three. <laughs> <laughs> missed on that second attempt. The value of free throws can never be undersold. Uh, in the in the grand scheme of a 40-minute game or longer, you know who's to say that that one miss 
won't be the difference at the end of the court at the end of the game. So the press has done its job. They've just taken uh, 10 seconds off the shot clock, and now they've got to run a faster set. Got him. That's his second foul. Foul number two, Sedarian Reigns. That man, Demarcus Gatlin. Salt and pepper, he's in everything. <laughs> oh, they're getting worse. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, that's actually a surprise now. Last year it was, yeah, like a scud, and now it's it's the surprise when they miss. Certainly got some air under it. But, um, no, they've looked good so far at the line. As long as they were good in the photo. <laughs> that's it. Missed two out of two. Certainly unexpected. Now, Abe Nyok, number 14, has come into the game. Another big body for the Raiders. Got another Good. huge body for the Raiders. Yeah. Where do you find him? <laughs> Great job by the Cats to shut that play down. That's, that is one huge advantage that, that the Melbourne clubs, especially the Metro clubs, have is just pure numbers. Yeah, look, it's, oh, I think it's both a, both a blessing and a curse because I know that there's a number of extremely talented players in that uh, Melbourne region that, you know, just by the sheer weight of numbers aren't getting a look in. Um, but take the chances when you can get them, yeah? Absolutely. Great hustle there by Lewis Thomas. So they've gone from a 30-point quarter to eight points in eight minutes. Oh, sorry, six minutes. Oh, he's and out of bounds. Great call there by Bruce. Absolutely right. Out of bounds, Damon Higher there. So credit to the Raiders team for shutting down that fast break game that was uh, that actually got the Supercats to that position. Because uh, you're exactly right. They've only scored eight, three and a half minutes to go in this quarter. A lot, uh, it's, it's a lot slower. So now the Supercats have to be brave from the range. So yep. Louis Valley especially. Louis Valley was open just then. Yeah. After missing the last two, he didn't put it up. He's got to launch that. Love seeing the big fellas get on the floor. I would be scared get seeing that, <laughs> that man running at me, though, I'll be honest. Showing a nice touch there. Abe Nyok. That's going to stretch. If Abe can hit that consistently, that is going to stretch his defender. He's going to have to come out and defend that, which is going to create a heap of space in the paint. Liam McInerney there. They cannot buy one. The, no. No, you're absolutely right. And this is where you've got to be got to be courageous as a player to, to take your shots, take your opportunities in the offense, especially when the team is... And Marlo Hicks has been sitting down for a long time. He has. Now, Bruce, do you want to tell, tell the listeners at home who just checked into the game? It was a rousing, rousing applause. Oh, Nathan Friend. So, uh, number 17. He uh, does a whole lot of community work down here. And, and uh, he's got his own cheer squad called Friendy's Friends. <laughs> he's uh, one of Geelong's favourite sons, I hear. Yeah, he's an uh, absolute legend of a man, gentleman. Does a lot of community work both here and his family does a lot of international stuff as well. Yeah. So, he actually, he actually uh, put something up on Facebook last week that his family set a school up in uh, Africa and they have video. Oh, spectacular. And all the, the the houses are named after the four kids, which is just really? amazing. Yeah. yeah. That is incredible. And a local kid from Geelong, huh? Yep. Making a difference on the other side of the planet. Yep. It's just incredible. And, you know, I think this is where basketball, you know, goes a lot, a lot further than just what happens on the court. Uh, it's, a, it's a global sport and it can really offer opportunities to, to give back and support others where you can and that's just one way to do it yeah and i think it's what's also interesting is people don't ask you know it's like what do you do who do mm. you do it for how do you do it yeah so he, he's so humble no one would ever know whoops yep so malik munio oh good hands. great hands there by that's got to be red ball. marcus gatlin red ball. malik munio has just checked in for the raiders
So Knox has turned this into a grind it out, and they're getting the shots that they want. And the Supercats yep. couldn't throw it in the ocean from the pier. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's a five-point game. And that's going to be offensive. Now, so he's calling that from the side. Yep. That's that's where the players and the coaches go now. So for those that missed the, the ladies' telecast, uh, there was a similar call and uh, just a discussion around with the three referees on deck who should make that call. Yes, and, and those of you who didn't hear that, it was the logical thing is the one who's standing in dead line with it, yep. you know, fr in front of it or right behind it. If you're side on, it's physically impossible to be able to call that. And if it looks bad, great, but... On that occasion, I, I'd, I'd have to say that from our perspective, I think they got that one right. Damon Hire was slid his feet, got there first. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think Demarcus, <laughs> <laughs> he says in pain. <laughs> but look, you know, five-point game, a minute and 53 to go in this first half, and the Raiders have, have done a wonderful job in executing whatever they wanted on both ends of the floor. Mm. Uh, nine points this quarter for the, the Supercats is definitely not what Leon O'Neill... Uh, as a coach, you would, would have wanted to have seen, uh, especially when the Raiders have, are just consistently scoring across that, you know, across the minutes so far. And yeah, they're just grinding it out. So they just let's be in touch at half time and then go on from there. But yeah, nine points. Right, it's and it's not for not bad shots. It's just the shots they were making in the first quarter yep. aren't going in. Contested, just not uh, just not falling. And so and Knox is saying you're not getting any O boards. Yep. Which is, you know, it's Good on them. One thing that stands out for me at this point is for the Geelong Supercats, the man who's leading in points, rebounds, and assists, Demarcus Gatlin. What happens if Demarcus isn't there? Yeah, really. What, you know, it's, it might not be all about him, certainly, but uh, Damon Heyer hits a three hits a three, and I can tell you what, I've seen him do that live and in person, and he can do it very well. So Knox is now comfortable. Yep. And Louis jumping backwards on his shot, and Demarcus has missed an easy stick back. Now I've got a credit to the refs on that sequence yep. for letting the players play. You know the hustle there by the Raiders—they're going to end up with the ball, uh, but by both teams, let the physical play go. Uh, great to see. And so, I'm just wondering why Mahalo Hicks is still sitting down. And it, it might be he's in foul trouble. Potentially. Damon Hire, you don't want him to heat up. And after all this, we're still ahead. <laughs> 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 or not. So you're seeing a lot more of the Raiders now really chasing those rebounds. Yep, they're they're on both ends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And... Uh, what are you saying? I should have been a coach. You might have been a lot future in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I can turn up for this and talk and leave and not be at practice in uh, June on a cold Monday night. <laughs> the gym. No. That is a great pass from that Damon Heyer. Sidarian Reigns has got to do a better job there. He really needs to have just gone straight up with that. He had the size advantage, had the position advantage. Uh, that looked like a foul. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't dunk that last one. Certainly capable of it. Nice finish there from Munia. And all of a sudden, it's tied up with 24 seconds to go. Three-second difference between uh, game and shot clocks. Supercats desperately needing a basket just to, well, feel good going into that halftime break that, you know, they've, uh, they've given up a sizable lead. And that's not how to do it. Five seconds to go. Who's going to? Oh. Lewis Bailey with an open look. But there we are, all tied up. Who would have thought it at the end of the first quarter that they'd be tied up at half time? But it's uh, Super Cats, Raiders 39 apiece after what was a very, very different second quarter after what we saw in the first quarter, Bruce. Yeah, that was actually a little boring, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of us talking. Yeah. Uh, but no, look, you certainly, yeah. So now's the now's the mental time. Do you walk in at halftime with as the Supercats and say, right, it's now zero all, and you've got a twenty minute game. Yep. Or um, you know, are you relishing or languishing the missed shots? But then 
with the knocks, you're saying, right, now we've fought our way back in. Now it's a 20-minute game. So now it's, it's exactly right. And there's a, there's a lot of learnings that can come out from both sides here. And I'd imagine that DMAC uh, would be... He'd be disappointed they were put in a position in the first place, but he'd be happy that they've come back to where they are and also understand then, okay, well, I did this, so what did the Supercats do and vice versa? And I think that's where Leon O'Neill really needs to address with his group at half time that same conversation, but in reverse, saying, hang on, what have these guys just done to us? Yeah. And then how did we then respond or not, as the case may be? And, you know, they're a, they're a strong team and uh, certainly I expect big things out of them coming into the third quarter, but, uh, yeah, yeah. setting it up for a pretty amazing second half. And it's int always interesting watching the coaches, you know, there's still 13 minutes to go mm. and they're letting the athletes go in, talk amongst themselves because they're the one in the heat of battle and drawing breath on, right, what's the message to right the ship? Because, for, and for both, you know, DMAX doing the same thing on the other side of the court. So, um, yeah, it comes down to the numbers and the stats, but what's the message you're going to give now for the, the next 20 minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Well, half time here at the... Supercats Raiders game round two of this NBL one season. Looking forward to a, a big second half.
Welcome back, everybody, to what will be a very exciting second half, no doubt, between the Geelong Supercats and the Knox Raiders, 39 apiece. And uh, as we just watch the teams come out and warm up and get ready, both looking, uh, both looking fit and ready to go. And so we uh, certainly, I guess, on both coaches to have had a, a pretty robust discussion with their respective crews about what they needed to, and we'll just see what comes out of it in this first few minutes. Bruce, what do you think? Uh, who, who do you think is going to make the the biggest impact? Which team to start uh, the second half? Knox, Knox is the obvious one because it looks like they've got more weapons in different mm. spaces. Um, you know, your point before of uh, the the highest rebounds, assists, and and points with Demarcus, he's got to have help now. Um, Marlow is, is trying to do that. He sat for a lot of that second quarter on two fouls. Mm. Um, but yeah, the Supercats need to find other avenues and quit. Um, if they don't, Knox is just going to come out and grind them again on defense. And they look like they've got their tails up on offense and they're, they're comfortable now in the arena. So uh, yeah, I'd, if, if I had to back anyone right now, it'd be Knox just because of what they showed in the second quarter. Yeah, yeah, look, and they certainly showed that ability to, to grind on the team. And uh, I, I think if you can you can do that and slow the pace and that fits in with uh, your offensive game then you know it can often be a very difficult position for the opposition to be in because it's this slow this slow play and you know you've got to try and find a rhythm out of that yeah it can often be a challenge and like we talked about in the women's game with you know the supercats having all the length you know Knox is long and yeah big and yep. and that's not going to get shorter it's not in, change. Yeah, <laughs> in height or width as the game goes on. Absolutely, absolutely right. So we're underway here. Second half action of uh, the Geelong Supercats, Knox Raiders clash. It's NBL 1, the inaugural season. As we see James Hunter splashing an open three. That was a great first set. Four guys yep. touched the ball, went side to side. And it's always good when your 208 centimetre forward can drop a three like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> DeMarcus doing DeMarcus things in what ends up being an easy layer for him. So that must have been a two, that last one, because it's now all tied up again. Yeah, absolutely. Feet. <laughs> That's it. Well, he's a big man. That is a big screen to have to run into. I'll tell you what, Cohen Blythe. Very different approach there. So that was a 21-second offensive set, yep. and, and they got the layup. And Darrell McDonald, in the, in the first quarter, would have launched that three. Yep. Uh, and he did that and missed a few, but on that occasion, great fake, got around, certainly athletic enough to, to rise up and, and took the bump, took the hit, and at the line for two. It's interesting that um, he looks and, and moves so differently to his dad. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Makes him the first there and... Still lightning quick. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing to watch guys like him train. Yep. You don't realise how fast they are until you actually see them from the sideline. Yeah, I'm just happy I retired when D-Mac came into the league. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, yeah, look, I was, I was watching some footage recently on, on D-Mac and gee whiz. Did he play basketball? Oh, he's seriously legit. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, the way he approached and attacked the game, uh, you know, he obviously had the physical tools to do it, but, um, you know, the way he approached it, and he was a bad man. Yeah. And he was, he was just smart. Like, oh, he was, he'd lull you to sleep and then he'd throw a bullet past your ear. Yeah. That's if you, uh, yeah, or you'd be an, end up on his poster. Yeah. One of the... <laughs> Another foul call there on the Supercats. That was actually a soft one. It was just Colin Blythe just bumped him on the, like they were just running down the key together. So it was mm. interesting. Very subtle, but uh, Darrell McDonald there, inside out dribble, slows down half a step just to allow the defender to come a bit closer so he can drop that pass off to his big man. Great shot there, Lewis Thomas, showing that mid range touch. So it's interesting watching Louis Barley play this yep. role because 
He's on the court to fill it up. And, like, he's a pure shooter. Right. Wow. And um, he's Big. in his shell right now. And I guess because he's missed a couple. But, he, but on his shot, he's jumping away. And he doesn't normally do that. That's a great finish. That was a great finish by Demarcus Gatlin. How he even got that up. It was actually blocked by James Hunter. Oh, you've got to get a body. You've got to secure that board. Supercats off the hook on that one. Marlo Hicks starting this quarter. Oh, great fake. Oh, you got to finish that, though. Marlo Hicks, six seconds left on the shot clock. You're in the key and you throw it out to your big guy for a three-point shot. Definitely, I think that's a, where Cohen Blythe just needs to back himself. Yeah. And just really needs to put it at the rim. I understand being a, I'm going to call myself six-foot guard. It's never played. Well, and a rookie too. Like, yeah. It's yeah. the big stage. And, he, and coming up from Big V, he wouldn't have seen size and length like no, this. No, nothing like it. Great read, though, by the young man. Take it to the rim. Great, great. great finish there. Lewis Thomas. Great hustle by Cohen Blythe there. Pick up that steal. 47 apiece here. Three and a half gone in this third quarter. Stationary. Yeah, now they're standing around again. Everyone's watching. So I wonder, is it it's the standing around or it's is it the, structured? It's the discipline to continue to run sets of yes. stuff that works. Because when they run, when they move the ball and they work together, they're unstoppable. Absolutely right. But right then you had a one-on-one -on -one situation and there was literally three guys on the other side not knowing what to do because there was no play call. What, what are we actually doing? Absolutely. So. And I'm all for creativity, but three guys standing around isn't good. Because no. that means the defense is watching too. Well, you got away with one so, there. I think so. So just uh, slowing the pace. Now, Darrell did everything right except he tried to reach. He uh, was in the right spot, but just tried to steal it. And again, putting, uh, putting some pressure on the ball handler, that's great. But um, no point picking up cheap fouls unnecessarily. Certainly come back to hurt you at the end of the game. Of course, a number of other games on around the league in this NBL 1 season. Northwest Tasmania going down to the number one expectors. Cohen Blythe rips the net on the three. Nice looking stroke too, I'll be honest. Yep. Nearly a turn over there. All of a sudden, the, uh, the Supercats crowd are feeling a bit excited. Damon Hire looking to answer. Great box out by Hicks and run. Oh, big dog threw it down right on Damon Hire's head. Nice throw down. Fantastic to see. That is a great run out by Lewis Thomas and a great pass by Marlo Hicks. Out, out of, of bounds. bounds. Supercats decided to turn it up off the back of Chloe and Blythe. Wonderful steal and score, and then dropping that three. Nothing wrong with Lewis Thomas's ups, that's for sure. <laughs> Two-handed stuff. That's what we wanted to see. And it was quick too. Very fast. Oh, hit it. Stop that. Six seconds on the shot clock. Something's got to happen here. Coughed it up. Stop uh -oh. what you're Oh. A magnificent touch from Sidarian Reigns. Not a bad little setup there. That uh, had that been on point, that might have actually brought down the whole house. That was a party. Oh, trip, great, it? great steal, great read. Oh, he blows the dunk, and the Geelong crowd are absolutely letting him know. Darrell oh, McDonald. Safety, safety. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing worse. <laughs> I wouldn't know, Bruce, but thanks for rubbing it in. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, look. 
especially wide open. Love like that. seeing it, and I will guarantee. Oh, oh Cohen well Blythe again. Oh, Damon High again. to try and block it. Get around him, Cohen Blythe, doing it all for the Cats. It's nice just to see rookies playing without fear, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Teammate calls timeout. Absolutely right there, D-Mac calling timeout as the Cats go up by five on the back of just pure hustle and effort. And that's, Cole, sorry, and that, that timeout on D-Mac has got nothing to do with their defense. It's all their offensive stuff. Yep. It's just breaking down and everyone's just standing around. No, you're absolutely right, Bruce. And look, yeah, I mean, you, you've got to be able to execute an offense. And those were simple things too. It's just passing to an open player, but... You know, if the defender's that close, you don't release the pass. Or, as yeah. a receiver, be available to receive. Like, it's uh, pretty simple things that have resulted in points, which I think is another key as well for the Cats. They've converted off the back of that. Yeah, and it's, you know, the, the second quarter, the energy that, that mm. knocks out on the O-glass. Yeah. It, it, again, it doesn't matter what the shot is. you just got to go, you got to get it and assume it's going to miss because a good night is 50%. Yeah, yep. Certainly beyond that, it's a good thing, so... Looking around the league at the moment, the Southern Sabres uh, down by two to the Dandenong Rangers. Six, uh, three minutes to go in the in the fourth period. Diamond Valley down five at the moment to the centre of excellence. Ballarat and Bendigo going at it. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter of their game. Ballarat comfortably in front at the moment by 15. Yeah, so were the Supercats at that time. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, Aubrey Wodonga down six at the moment against the Ringwood Hawks. So after that timeout, and one. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce, for the input. I appreciate it. So Cohen Blythe finishing the trifecta and letting Damon High know all about it too. If you don't mind, the young fellas up and about. It's what we want to see out of these young players. The coach made a couple of subs on that one. Now, oh, big fella did a bit of a dance yeah. on the catch. Oh, you get a bit of flexibility there. That's a tough shot. Oh. Try to be put up by Mike Rose. And Competing. Rose. Compete on the O boards. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Good sportsmanship there by the big fella. Yeah, yep. Helping up the catch player there. That's what we like to see. And it's one of those frustrating things is when you're on the defensive end and you feel like you're jumping and jumping and guys are on your back and, um, you know, it's it, there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to compete. That's it. Yep. And you've just got to remember that when your team's got the ball, that's you. Yes. So it's good that the scoring's freed up again, so it's not like watching grass grow. <laughs> So three and a half to go here. Third quarter. It was that one. Cats up five. Marcus Gatlin, yet another rebound. Swish. <laughs> so the Cats up seven. Looking to extend here. This is a great set by Knox. Eight seconds to go on the clock. O board. Three clear and now four started all again. Now oh. see that? Three seconds in. Oh. Yeah, it went in. Right. That's not a good set. Wow. You take it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> You'll take that any day of the week. That's when the coach goes, ah, oh, good shot. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> so plenty of action here. It really... The intensity is lifted on both sides and it's willing. Liam McKinney. Oh, splashes it right in Sedarian's face. Returns the favour. And he has got that range, so that's good to see. So what's happening now, it's interesting, on the weak side of the ball, a lot of the guys are getting stuck on curl cuts because they're trying to go over the top of the screen. Oh, now see, that's an impossible call. You cannot call that. Doesn't matter, who, doesn't matter who that's against. That's a guess. Gatlin. And there's a referee right foul. Sorry, folks. 
I'd be saying the same thing if it was the Raiders. And that would have been off to the races as well. That could have been an easy two. Well, it's just you've, you've got to have, there's got to be a common sense approach. And just if someone says, if you're reaching behind, you have to foul them. Well, there's guys that have lightning quick hands that can actually touch the ball and knock it out of your hands if you don't take care of it. James oh, Hunter. That's a, good shot. that's a great shot. He was comfortable yes. shooting it too. Yeah. When the team looks comfortable in him taking it, which is. Oh, that's a big shot. Oh, oh, and drops it. So if you notice on a that one. Out. He, he, jumped, he was straight up on that. He wasn't afraid away. So, you know, it's a big difference to get that base set, doesn't it? Another steal for the Cats. Well, it's a body language thing too. Like it's like this is going up and going in. Oh, Lewis is looking yeah, now. You yeah, yeah, there. yeah. Here we go. Lewis Wiley putting him on skates. Oh no, we've got a Super uh -oh. Cats player down. Hold clutching his knee. That's not a good sign. I can't so see who that is, Bruce. That's our brand new man, Mark. Can't remember his last name. Sorry, guys. First game in. Clutching his knee. Hopefully he's all right. Hopefully it was just a clash of knees. We're not at ESPN, so we don't have a replay. Oh, he's walking off, so that's a good sign. Walking off under his own steam, which is good. Hopefully nothing too serious. Okay, 90 seconds to go. Plus eight, Super Cats. They get to set the inbound. Knox looking at uh, uh, representing a full court press, but dare I say it's going to be the trap again. Yeah, Louis has got his tail up. He's uh, confident now. And again, the Raiders just trying to burn clock. That is a great chase by McInerney. Four seconds on the clock. He's got to shoot it. See, that's where shot clock recognition is so important. Yep. And it's important for the players that don't have the ball to be communicating with each other and with the ball handler. It didn't hit the rim. Clock didn't reset. Great slip. Well, it's a great steal. Excellent help. This is going Lewis on. is, yep, yeah, launch it. Nope. Got to get his legs under him, though. Cohen Blythe. Settling the troops. Lewis Thomas looking to go to work. And what is a 2-3 zone from the Raiders? Deep shot clock again. Great Lewis shot. Thomas. Stepped through. Silky touch from the big man. All he's of a sudden, there's Mount Gambier and he's been awesome. All of a sudden, it's a 10-point gap. Cats ahead. 20 seconds to go. What is this last set going to look like for the Raiders? Damon Heyer. Two shots. Too many hands on him and then. Going to the rim. Clock stops on 14. So is my math right? Is that a 28 point quarter? Was it 37 all at the half? I think it'd be pretty close there. Yep. 28-18. Damon Heyer makes the first. Hey, what if Knox continues to run their sets? Um, there's not going to be many teams that, that beat them in this league. Mm. Not with the, they've got an unbelievable roster. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Oh, Lewis Thomas Finish wants that. the Euro. He wanted to go start to finish. Coast to coast. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Cohen Blythe. Can he sit? Don't fail. And there it is, there we have it. At three quarter time, Super Cats up by eight, 65 57, a, a much more high scoring, free, free flowing quarter. <laughs> well, I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> it was really good. It was much more good. Yeah. <laughs> Dong scored 26 in that quarter, Knox put up 16. Much better effort from the Cats after coming off a nine point second quarter so so DMAC now I'm, I'm thinking like that zone he just went into was really good and it, yep. and it unsettled him yep it, it, it's literally going to come down now to their execution on offense if they can continually get movement and attack the rim 
because they're, because they're so long, yep. so they should roll over the top of the Supercats. But if, if they continue to bomb from three early in the shot clock, they're not going to win. And that's, I think, where it's, it's not necessarily about that first shot for the Raiders it's because they've got such big bodies that are going to clean up everything. Yep. If it misses, they're, they're so big uh, that, that they're going to take that that board and then just put it back straight on them. And so... And they've got 10 minutes to do it. Like, they don't need to get the... You know, it's only eight points. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of time left here in the game. And I'll tell you what, it's been an entertaining affair, with the exception of the second quarter, which was a little bit, as we said, pedestrian. <laughs> is, is that another word for boring? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, that, so what, what, if I was Leon right now, or what he's probably saying is more of the same, mm. and... Probably watch who you trail on the cuts because yeah. some of the guys who are trailing, especially on the weak side, they're, they're, cut, they're curl cutting straight back to the basket with no intention of shooting it. So they should be sliding underneath that screen and, and making them catch it at 26 feet and say, look, I dare you. And yep. once you've made a couple, then we'll play defense on it. So yeah, it'll be interesting. So look, I, absolutely, I agree. And for the, for the younger listeners, what we're talking about is just stopping them from being able to have a free lane around a screen. So instead yeah. of tr following your player around the screen, you go under the screen or beneath the screen, whatever the terminology might be at your particular club, and uh, cutting off the progress of that cutter there. Yeah. And that way he has to step out because you're already there. You get there first. Yeah. So. You've got to know who you're playing against. So Know your opposition, yeah? Yep. So as the fourth quarter's underway... What are the chances of OT? Pretty high. Based on the ladies' game, anything could happen. Yep. And the Geelong Arena is absolutely rocking to Neil Diamond. I never thought I'd <laughs> ever say that. But Welcome. sweet Caroline. Welcome to Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> Count it. <laughs> no, it's actually a... Um... Now, why is Leon O'Neill pointing? A bit of miscommunication here, I think, from referees. One had it going the other way, and one's had an and one call. The end one is the call. One more free throw to come. Everyone had taken off. Yeah, I couldn't see what happened down there. That was interesting. Mm. So. Rebula, Michael Rebula. Yep, Rebs. Rebs. He's come up from uh, Big B as well. Fantastic. Another local kid. Jump shot for a free throw. Effective though. And can shoot it. Can shoot. He's been quiet in there so far as he's filling his feet in the league, but he can fill it up too. 11 point lead here for the Cats. The Knox Raiders men Steve. looking. Uh, they're, they're guessing, aren't they? A little they? bit lost. Yeah, they, they don't really know what they're looking for. It's a big, strong long, move. Long shot sequence. That was good. That's 21 seconds. James Hunter. Nice left handed touch. Damon Heyer. Certainly make Josh Tang work for it. Oh, that's a great move by Hicks. The up and under, silky smooth by the big man. Love seeing that. It's actually not fair that a guy that big can move like that. Wow. I was loving that original crossover. That was, that yeah. was incredible. And then to go up and under, he really should have dunked it. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was spectacular. And, you know, this is what we love to see oh. out of these games. Lewis Thomas is great vision. You almost have a responsibility on that catch to shoot it after a pass like that if you're that open. <laughs> Even if you've got someone closing you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Take a photo of this. Damon Hyre will have a look from downtown. Pull it out. Off the mark. Rebs. Great patience. Could see Josh Tang back out there. Uh, he's, he's, he was on early in the game. Yeah, these are the important minutes now yep. where the, the guys can get minutes at, you know, the start of the fourth. They probably won't be there in the in the crunch. No, but this is where they, they learn they can get out there, feel what it's all about. Yep. James Hunter on that last sequence is a little bit late to help. So it was a nice, easy floater in the end. Foul on number 26, Cohen Blythe. Cats up 13 here, but I'm... Um, don't know if it's a comfortable 13 just yet. No, it'll be 13 if it's 30 seconds. Yes. That'll be comfortable. 
Darian Ryan's checking back in along with Darrell McDonald. So now they've got the big trees in. Let's uh, see how they execute on this. This is a different five they've had in too. Yes, yep. Keep an eye on Adam Thursby. He's hiding in the corner at the moment. This might be a three-point set for him. Lefty. Yep. Well, Darrell. Nice cross. Darrell. Darrell. <laughs> Operate <laughs> successful. Patient dead. <laughs> Sedarian says, get that out. Does all the hard work. His That's teammate. Oh, just rims out. Hicks. Don't bring that ball down. Jump ball here. That'll be Knox ball. A knox ball it is. Great sequence from both teams there. Absolutely. Reigns with the block. Hicks with the root. Neil near tip in. Jerome Arena is up and about at the moment. Fans getting treated to a great hit out at the moment. Their team up. 72-59. Cameron Brock. Oh, jump on that. Great job. Great intensity from the young Supercats players. Cohen Blythe. Two rookies. With the steal. Josh Tank getting on the floor. That'll earn you more minutes from your coach, young men. Fantastic to see. Leon O'Neill for the timeout. So that's an interesting timeout. I, I think he's uh, just going to settle the troops. Keep, coach, keep doing what you're doing. Coach may have seen something there. He just wanted to have a chat to them about it. It is interesting in that scenario. I would have thought uh, if anyone was going to call a timeout, it would have been DMAC there. But uh, Coach O'Neill said, no, I want to have a chat to the boys. And, and here we are. DMAC's got to be getting frustrated on the sideline there because they're doing, they're doing a lot of the right stuff. But... I know I'm harping on it, but they're too terminal. And like every single time they run the shot clock down to, you know, three, four, five seconds, they get a layup or a wide open shot and it goes in. Mm. And that's the strength of their group. Like you, you have to play defense for 20 seconds. They're going to score on you every time. Every single time. No, I, I absolutely agree. And I think this may be the consistency conversation that they'll have, you know, throughout the course of, of the 15 rounds. Uh, this NBL one, uh, but certainly in game, you, you've got to be able to be agile and make those changes on the fly, or recognise what is successful for you, and, yeah. and then run with it. And at yeah. the end of the day, it's you know it's 13 points. Yeah, sure, there's seven minutes to go, but if you don't change it soon, uh, then the game can get away from you pretty quickly. The knock is in a zone here. Let's say a two high, so a two three. Hicks with the fadeaway. Yeah, two Looks three. confident. So they got to stop on that, so that's good. Now they've got to convert it. It's a great back cut. That's much better movement from the Raiders team there. Yeah. But this is where it stops. See, it's, everyone takes one or two dribbles. Let's see if Damon Hire has to put that up. Ah. A four. Lucky there for the Raiders. Cats were off again. So right now is where you, you get a stop like that and you've got to make that immediate decision of let's take let's take time off the clock mm. and just go down and execute. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, fast break's great, but we're probably gonna pull it out anyway. Because Knox is now playing for the fast break, so oh. Second chance. Yep. Off the hook there, the Cats. Jerome McDonald took the lane first and then offensive rebound by James Hunter. Demarcus Gatlin about to check back in. Josh Tang. Josh Tang calls his own number. I like that from the young man. What's wrong with that? In rhythm. Oh. Surprised to see that miss. I'm not sure what mm. happened there. That's a good hit out too. James That's Hunter. I don't know if that was blocks. No, that was just a, uh, just a no idea. Just a oops. Oh, Mar actually, close, yeah, Marlowe got it from the back. Yeah. Surprised he got away with it, actually. Yeah. Marcus Gatlin back on. Six minutes. No score either way in the last couple of minutes. Oh, hedged the other way. Ooh. Oh, big man. He'll take this all the way too if you can. Oh. No. Not a bad shot, but he was going to fill to the wing, but Marlowe thought he was going to cut to the hole. Yeah, Marlowe's got to go to the basket on this. But Barley, there he is. 
Louis Valley. 16. Said thank you. I'll have that. 16 points here. So right now, apart from guy with the ball, I'd be going under every single screen. Because they have not proven that they're efficient from outside yet. Agreed. 15 feet? Yep, no problem. Nice shot there from Darrell yeah. McDonald. Silky 15 footer. He could be hitting that all night too. Yep. If you wanted to. It's a quick first step from Gatlin. Gray contested the rim. Hicks got away with a foul on that. Yeah, he did. I think McDonald's just hurt himself. Keep playing. Darrell, Mc, Darrell McDonald is in some serious pain there. He is walking himself off the court. He got a corky right leg. Ah, uh, that had happened. Yeah. Right above the knee on the on your band. Never a nice feeling. It's worse when the uh, masseuse gets their yep. elbows into it. Get the work into it. So, quick sub there from the Raiders. Inbound, Damon High play. got his shot blocked. Great play. Lewis Thomas. <laughs> Lewis Thomas. He's had a night he's, out, hasn't he? He's having a, he's having a night all right. And I'll tell you what, after Lewis Farley put up and hit that three, Lewis Thomas had the, the fingers up. He's into it. He's <laughs> animated. Well, he's come out of a, uh, a winning program at Mount Gambier. <laughs> yes. And uh, he was one of their pillars in that program. So. I'm well, happy he, to have him. Yes, I think if he keeps swaying this way, I think, uh, you know, he might become a pillar of this Super Cats team as well, I'll be honest. Seeing great things from the whole squad, but it's it's great to see animated players like that that are really involved in the game and enjoying the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Four and a half minutes here, fourteen point lead for these Super Cats. I asked him to play this song for you too. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bruce's favourite song. No, no. You're happy and you know it. The Geelong Arena is up. I've never thought I would see the Geelong Arena up to this song, but they're there doing it. Great motion here from the Cats. Two seconds on the clock. He's got to get it up. Not fast enough. Cameron Blythe, too many dribbles. There was a couple of looks there that the Cats could have got, but they, they tried to be unselfish. Sometimes you've got to, uh, you've got to put the shot up. Yeah. And see, I'm not, I'm not actually worried about that. Like, instead of throwing up a prayer that's a really bad shot and mm. the team can um, get something out of it, like a fast break, Kill the clock. Yeah, yeah. You know, D Max got a timeout now. They have to regroup. You know, they've got to make up 14 points in under five minutes. In under five minutes, absolutely. And foul, foul count isn't going to make a, a difference at this stage. Uh, maybe the next couple of minutes, it might depend on how it plays mm -hmm. out. But uh, the Knox Raiders only shooting 30% tonight. Uh, you know, 22 of 72. And they've only scored 24 points since half time. It's just. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to get the job done, but there's still a lot of time. They've only scored four points this quarter. Uh, and so, credit to the Cats. Yeah, it's just the Cats have lifted their energy, and um, especially on defense, they've just cranked it up and then pushed it down their throat. So, yeah. it's been really interesting. I thought um, Knox would have had a lot more rim protection with their athleticism. Yeah, it's certainly interesting to, to, to watch how that dynamic will play out over the course of the season. Yeah. I know a lot does come down to the opposition you're playing, but certainly I haven't seen a lot of, uh, you know, a big front line that they could put in. Uh, you know, seeing some of these players are quite significantly you know, built. So I'm looking at Knox now and saying, if you can get one on them early, it's a bonus. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in 15 rounds from now, you do not want to play them. The Supercats are really pressing now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they are very, very physical in the paints. They're in, that's a great cut. That's a great that cut. That is a brilliant cut. And great vision from Reigns as well. Not only to see it, but then to make the pass. He could have gone one on one and probably could have had his, but decided not to. Went for the team option. That was a great. Damon Heyer, feeling like he got there first. That's a uh, that's a really hard call for the ref too. With um, it is everyone's just watching the ball in that defense. So floor cleaners, and that's that is the hardest call in basketball. No, absolutely, right, that one right it, it there. really is. And uh, no matter which call, which way you go, 
there's going to be someone that disagrees with you. <laughs> I mean, that's every call, I understand, but that, but in, that in particular... But that one there is a split second. Yep. Um, has the offense had a chance to change direction? Yep. You know, was the defense far enough across? Were they upright? Were in the right position? There's so many things going on. I think that's why it's a credit to, to the referees. Look at d -Mac even doing the floor wiping. He's doing it all. MVP. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see it on screen. They're showing <laughs> Coach Leon and uh, Louis Varley. But, uh, yeah, DeMarcus is out there doing it all. And I didn't think it was like he's fallen over, but... It's not like it's a humid night. It shouldn't be that much to wipe up, should it? The safety of all players, Bruce, is paramount. Oh, totally. And those labels aren't the, the decal <laughs> in the middle of the floor, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't got sandpaper on it, that's for sure. No, that's true. That's true. So three minutes, 48 to go. 75-63. 12-point difference can evaporate very quickly. Cats have got to keep their foot on the pedal. They've got to play aggressive. Louis Farley will do that. Oh, Marlo Hicks off the dribble. The left hand. I reckon the Cats have to score at least, at least another 10 points. That's him. Thosby, that is just him all day. If you want to know Adam Thosby's game? That was it right there. Silky smooth left hand shooter. Speaking of good shooters. It's a great early move from Hicks. He certainly knows what to do down there. Yeah, I've never seen anyone uh, so deliberate oh. and fast. When he goes, it's just gone. Mike Rose shooting from the car park. Oh, and here's another face. Fast break. Steve, Steve Gatlin getting right upstairs for the guard. That's just insult to injury for the Raiders. Who are now down 14. Two minutes, 40 to go. Gatlin with another steal. And that would be more fast break points. The, the Supercats team are just putting on an effort clinic here against the Raiders. Daryl McDonald is not happy and will be having a very serious conversation to his boys if they end up losing this, which at the moment it's looking like is going to be happening. Damon Hyer. Oh, there's a shot ball. rejected. <laughs> Lewis Thomas. Yeah, he landed. Red Had landed blue. before he hit it back onto the <laughs> nox. That was a great heads up play though. And that was a great call by the referee to be that switched on to that. That was good. And he's having a good laugh about absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thosby. Oh. And one! Wow! What a shot by Adam Thosby. Ripping the net. So that's and a, one. Two quick threes for him. Absolutely. And look out. 13 point lead. Two minutes to go. And I'm assuming he's going to make this. I reckon you could probably tie the other hand behind his back. <laughs> Blindfold him. Leave him with his left hand and still make it. So d has got a timeout. Which so leaves him with zero. So that's a really interesting timeout. You would have uh, probably gone another minute or so without calling oh. that, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, 13 down. Assuming it's going to be 12 after this play. Th this for me would be... I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't have called the timeout particularly. I would have had my on-court leadership group or getting together and having a chat. And, and even if just talking about it through then, because really they had some momentum there. And what's this going to do to the Raiders and what they're going to try, you know, in well, that momentum? Well, I'm, I'm assuming DMAC's going to say, right, we've now got someone who's finally found his shot outside and we're going to run this set for him every single time. And uh, if anyone else shoots it... Yep. You don't want to be in the locker room. <laughs> 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 so, like, you know, you finally found someone who stroked it and it's unconscious. So get him going and see what happens. And, you know, you know, it'll be interesting to see who Leon puts on him now yes. as a defender to make him shoot even higher. So whether, like, at the moment he's, he's got Cohen on him, he may put DeMarcus on him, mm. I don't know. But it's got to be... Um, yeah, you've still got the, the five guys, same guys out there. So let's see. This is why it's fun sitting up here. Absolutely. It's like the assistant coach all caring no responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam Thosby completes the N1. Full court pressure here from the Raiders. Interesting that DeMarcus threw the ball in from behind the basket, which is the 
No, no, you learn it under 12. Great composure here off from the Cats. That's a great... And attack. Damon Heyer picking up the tee. He's about to get ejected if he's not careful. Foul is on Damon Heyer and then the follow-up tech on him Damon also. Is up throwing the ball? I didn't see the play. Would you throw the um, ball? No, so what happens now? Um, no, he just cussed out the ref. Okay. So, yep. so Lou will get two shots and Supercats will get the ball back. So... There's a way to converse with the referees, and that is not it. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, too, because if you, if you build a relationship with the officials, mm. there's a mutual respect, because yes. they know you're out there trying to compete. They yep. know that you get frustrated. But They, too, get frustrated as well. They, too, know, get they're, frustrated. They're involved and, in the game. And, and they've driven from somewhere mm -hmm. um, to participate in the game that they love. Yep. Absolutely right. It was Farley making the first glaring statistic for me at this point as we were last two minutes of the game. Fast break points, Super Cats 17, the Raiders 6. Really? As Farley closes it out. And look at the split in the game. Surprise. Yeah. Who would have thought it, huh? 14 point differential here, two minutes to go. It is all uphill. So all uphill for the Raiders. It's now the two minute drill. And we're in the bonus. Supercats are in the bonus. Great pickup. Not by shooting like that, you're not. Excellent hustle there from, from both teams. So that just burned 15 seconds. Oh, oh. denied at the rim. Lewis Thomas has denied Sidarian Reigns and said, not in my house, big fella. Not tonight, not ever. At the rim. That is On going to rim. be... If that is not the highlight of this round, <laughs> I do not want to know. We met him at the top, at the very top. Extraordinary play. Lewis Thomas is doing everything here and letting everybody know about it. Sidarian doesn't really know what just happened. That's I, where you sit on the other bench and you just clap. You go, that's awesome. At any level, that, that is awesome. Yeah, you've you got to respect that. I would have called that a travel personally, but Demarcus, you're allowed you're to three steps now, mate. Okay, apologies. I don't care what happens from here on out. <laughs> Lewis Thomas, you've done it for me, young man. That was amazing. <laughs> and, and I want to see are, every angle of that. And what people don't understand is how hard to try and do that would be. He was just straight up. Yep. And those be... Oh. oh. Yep. He'll now do that's, it. that's his first shot in the last minute and a quarter when they got a timeout. Yep. That's the, the next time he's touched it. Took him a minute and a quarter. So the Geelong Arena on their feet. 14 points ahead with a minute to go. The Raiders are going to try and do everything they can. But barring some miracle, the Supergats are going to walk out of here. Winners against a talented Knox Raiders team. That's a great pass by Varley. Getting them being stripped. Supercats ball. Five, five seconds on the shot clock. This is just a catch and shoot, isn't it? Oh, great. And one. Gatlin and one. This is a fantastic response from this Super Cats squad after last week's disappointing effort for the boys to come out and play like this. Yeah, absolutely. With full intensity for the entire game. Reb's coming in. Cohen Blythe for me. It's got to be in that MVP conversation for this game. He put on, he went on a six or seven minute run there, defensively, offensively, really triggered in that third quarter. As Gatlin finishes, completes the and one. 35 seconds to go. The Super Cats up by 17, caused another turnover. Oh, great no look dish. Lewis Thomas icing on the cake. 19 points, who would have thought? And I can guarantee you right now, there won't be many teams that will beat this Knox squad by 19 points again. No, no. Marlo Hicks protecting the paint. The scary thing, Knox has only scored 32 points this half. Amazing. So 51. So Darian Reigns cashing in another three. Yeah, I would have shot that too. <laughs> <laughs> they better start the clock. 
Great pass there. Those be oh, missing on the attempt. It was Thomas got to the MVP, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. Honestly. Five seconds to go here. Don't shoot it. No. Great run out there. Fantastic game from these Geelong Supercats. who are committed from the start. The entire squad on their feet. Raiders are run out of here. 16 point losers tonight. The Supercats, all credit to them. That was an amazing game. It was a uh, tale of two halves, wasn't it? Oh, it was, absolutely. Uh, when we thought Knox was going to start rolling, they, you know, they stopped. They, they scored less in the second half than they did in the first half, which yeah, was just, surprising. It's absolutely surprising. And uh, look, knowing uh, Darren McDonald and his, his staff, they'll, uh, they'll go and diagnose this. They'll go and break it down, get it into detail. And yep. the next training session that they have uh, will be very, very intense. And, and as we alluded to, they're, they're a deeply talented squad. So I'd imagine that uh, they'll... You know, approach the next game with uh, a lot more intensity and be ready to go, but not taking anything away from these Super Cats. They Absolutely. were impressive tonight as they get around each other. Coming away, 16-point winners in this Round 2 clash. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for watching. See you next time.